About a year ago, I was this close to giving up on my dream of becoming a writer, author, and life coach. I had applied to a job for my favorite life coach in the entire world. She had a position opened to be her copywriter and essentially a ghostwriter for her. And when I saw this opportunity, I knew that it was mine. And at this point in my life, I desperately needed to be chosen. I needed a break after seven years of pouring my heart and soul into my writing and into my work and just getting constant rejection after rejection after rejection. I needed this win to carry on. So I worked about 80 hours on this job application and portfolio. I did everything I possibly could to make it perfect, to make it the best. I knew that with my life coaching background and my writing background that there was nobody better for this job than me. Upon submitting my application, I remember right before I hit the send button, I said a prayer to the universe and I said, please let me be chosen. Please let me be chosen. I waited around for a month and every single day I asked the universe the same thing. Please let me be chosen. Please let me be chosen. And I was on my computer one day and I got an email notification and I opened up my Gmail and there was a subject line from her team and it said following up. So I anxiously clicked on it and the beginning of the letter sounded good and it seemed like it was good news. And then all of a sudden it said, we're sorry to break it to you, but I instantly broke out into an intense sob. You couldn't even call it a cry. I was sobbing because I needed to be chosen so badly. And I was on the brink of not believing in myself and this was just proof, once again, that I wasn't enough. I remember my mom walked into my room because she obviously heard that I was breaking down and sobbing. And I remember seeing the look in her eyes, the pain in her eyes, because she was embracing the moment, that moment when I was giving up on myself, where I, w I was just done. I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't take the pain of rejection any longer. And worst of all, I felt delusional and silly for even thinking that I could even do it in the first place. And it was really hard to see her believe in me so much and believe in my work so much. And yet she couldn't convince me otherwise. I was done. And I stayed in this energy for about three days. I would just break out into uncontrollable sobs. And then on day four, I entered into this really awesome rebellion energy. I thought to myself, you know what, I don't need the world to choose me. I don't need this life coach to choose me because I'm going to choose myself. I'm done waiting to be chosen. I'm done waiting for the approval, for the validation. The world needs my work and I'm gonna do it. So it turns out that that prayer I was sending for over a month to the universe, please let me be chosen. I was chosen. I was chosen by myself. And every single leader or guide or teacher is going to go through a moment like this where they have to choose themselves. You can't wait on the world to choose you. You have to choose yourself. And that's what we're learning in the Influence Workshop. 
So guys, what I just did right there was exactly what you're going to learn how to do right now. That was an example of telling a defining moment story. So what I want you to do right now is make sure that you open up the link that I sent in that email and print out your influence packet at this time. The reason why I'm sending this pre-work right now is because I want us to have the opportunity to really dive into your stories and just doing this one part could be an entire workshop in itself. So instead I chose to teach this to you in advance so you can come in ready to work and explore your story. So I want to share with you a couple reasons why sharing your story is so important when it comes to influencing others. We as humans learn autobiographically, which means that when we're listening to someone's story, we implant ourselves into that story. So say you hear someone who's telling a story about their mom you immediately start thinking about your mom and how their story could be relative to a story that you've been through in life. Or say you're on a date and your date starts talking about their ex. You're gonna immediately start thinking about your ex. We just naturally and psychologically implant ourselves into other people's stories. And that is actually what builds true connection. So how do you even begin crafting your story? If you flip to page two, we're going to start by working on your 10 cool quirks. So what makes you fascinating? What makes you interesting? These could be characteristics or life stories. So go ahead and get creative. Love yourself. I know that you can think of 10 because you have way more than 10. So open up to the possibilities and get creative. Go ahead and write your 10 cool quirks. So now we're gonna work on your defining moment. So take a second and pick one of the 10 quirks that seems like your favorite that you feel the most drawn to working with. And now flip to page three. And within that quirk is a story. We are gonna distill that quirk down by asking why. So say a characteristic about you is that you're really brave. Why are you brave? What happened in your life that made you brave? When was that defining moment that you started identifying with bravery? When did you decide from this point forward in my life, I'm going to act and be like this? So what I want you to do right now is to relive and replay that defining moment, that scene that you lived through. And what I want you to do is free write. So don't use punctuation, just let it flow through you. Okay, go ahead and get to work. Next, we're gonna add dimension to your defining moment. So think of someone that was also involved in this story. Usually if there's stories from our childhood, there's a parent or a teacher or a sibling that's involved. So who else was involved in this story with you? So the defining story that I opened up this video with, the person that was involved in the story with me was my mom when she saw me super upset about not getting the job and I saw the pain in her eyes from seeing the pain that I was going through. So when I was working on this defining story, I put myself in my mom's eyes. What scene did she walk into when she came into my bedroom? So go ahead and do that now with your defining moment. Pick a person that was involved in the story and now free write below about how it was from their perspective. Okay, now that your story is loaded with detail thanks to the other person's point of view, the only thing that you're missing is the enemy. Every single story needs an enemy and a conflict. You are the hero in this story and you want the person who's listening to be rooting for you. So in the example I shared at the beginning, my enemy was actually the role model life coach that I looked up to. I wasn't enough for her. My work wasn't enough for her. She didn't pick me. She became my enemy in this story even though I still love her to death. The enemy doesn't have to be a bad person, it's just what you're going up against in this story. The enemy also doesn't have to be a person, it could be a circumstance, a turn of events, bad luck. The enemy can even be yourself. We're often going up against ourselves whenever we are learning and growing. 
So what I want you to do right now is think of the enemy in your story. Who were you going up against? It's also important that we reveal this enemy very early on in your story so people can be engaged and start rooting for you right away. So go ahead and fill out the questions below to become more familiar with the enemy. The last step is to piece the story together. So take a look at all the details that you just wrote up through our previous explorations and then figure out what feels the most natural and easy way for you to tell this story. You don't want to memorize your story. What you want to do is really feel your story at a cellular level. Feel it and tell it through your body. And this is what we're really going to be practicing during our time together. So don't worry too much about this part, but definitely write through your story, get clear on it because we are going to be presenting them at the end of the workshop. Don't get nervous. We're going to be releasing all of that nervous energy and we're here to support each other. With that being said, I also want you to feel comfortable and confident with the story that you are sharing. So please know in advance that we are going to be sharing these stories with the group. So if you don't feel quite ready sharing a certain story with our group yet, then maybe pick a little bit more of a light-hearted story that you want to share this week. The cool thing about this process is that we have so many defining moments in our life to choose from, and we can create many of these that we can use in different areas of life. So the defining moment story that you may share on a first date is probably different than the defining moment story that you'll share in a job interview. But whenever you are using this tool, you are inviting people in to connect with you, to feel with you, and it just makes you that much more magnetic and engaging. And of course, influential.